Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 29. So, what I want to do tonight is this. We've been looking at sanctification, and so um, this does deal with sanctification in a lot of ways. However, I just felt the prompting of God's Spirit tonight to minister on this passage of Scripture. And about two years ago on a Sunday morning, I looked at this Scripture, and some of the things that I said then I'm going to say tonight, uh, but, but other things as well. So for all you folks that... Uh, have memories like an elephant, and it's been about two years, so I'm okay to minister on this, right? Amen. The Word of God says, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. Wow. Isn't that amazing? All you ladies in here that your husbands work to woo you and bring you. Some of you, maybe it was quick. Some of you, maybe it wasn't so quick. Amen. I got a thumbs up back there. Amen. Now, here this guy, he falls in love. Amen. Jacob, he loves Rachel. It's been seven years. He's working for her. But the Bible says it only seems like a few days. Wow. How awesome. <laughs> And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. Uh, it, it simply, uh, he said, Listen, Laban, I, I've worked seven years for Rachel. Amen. I've proven it. I've done it. I'm ready for her. My time's up. I've given you the time. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Okay, we'll talk more about this in a little bit. All the men gather together and he makes a feast. And, uh, and it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought uh, her to him. And he went in under her. He went in under her. She's wearing a very heavy veil. It's probably evening. The, the party's gone on. The lights are low and dim. And Laban gave his daughter Leah, uh, uh, Zilpah, for his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass in the, uh, in the morning, behold, it was Leah. Did you hear what I said? He worked seven years for Rachel. <coughs> and here it is evening, and the veil was over her face, and they had just consummated marriage. And he wakes up, and it's not Rachel, it's Leah. Surprise. Man, you all should seem stone-faced tonight. <laughs> I bet if you were Jacob, you wouldn't be stone-faced. <laughs> and so the Bible says, And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve? Did we make this agreement with you for Rachel? Wherefore you have begot me, you've deceived me. And Laban said, it, 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 it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn, the custom that they have. Uh, fulfill her week, and we will give you all uh, you, this also uh, for the service. Give him Rachel when you serve me yet another seven years. Wow, you loved her. So I want you to think about this. I gotta be honest, this is probably one of the most baffling stories in the Bible today. That here this man marries and wakes up in the morning and realizes it's not who he wanted to marry. Now, some of you men, you may have married someone and you realize somewhere down the road it's not who you thought. We'll give you some advice. Bite your tongue. <laughs> because you're in this now. <laughs> some of you women might be the same way. But we'll give you some advice too. Bite your tongue. You're in this for the long haul. <laughs> Amen. So here it is. 
that Laban earned the right, or Jacob earned the right from Laban to marry his beautiful daughter Rachel. But when he woke up in the morning, the woman laying beside of him was the weaker eyed, the not so pretty Leah, whom he did not fall in love with. Get, I'm going to get somewhere. Just hang on, and it's going to help you. He had married the wrong woman. And so, uh, as we've said already, we've seen from Scripture, and the custom there in uh, 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 Pandoram is, is no different than, than some other places. The custom here in the East is, how can we give the younger daughter to be wed when the older daughter is yet unwed? The way it works in our family is the older daughter gets married first, and then the younger daughter. I'm just telling you the customs, what was happening. So that's what was going on. And so uh, uh, Laban said, it's unheard of. You can be dumbfounded. You can be angry. But I can't give you my younger daughter when my older daughter isn't married yet. And so I think what is there to learn from this as we look at it? Some of you may say, well, uh, the, the lesson to be learned is make sure you look under the veil before you say I do. <laughs> uh, you know, they some of them don't even wear veils nowadays. Uh, but, but I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's more lesson than that. Uh, I, I believe that the Old Testament is filled with all types of shadows and types. And, 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 and so there are things that we can learn, even concepts from way back here in Genesis, that are still applicable in this 21st century that we live in. Uh, there are still things that are applicable for us today that we can learn by. And so as we look, I think we have to jump back a bit into the whole story of who Jacob is and everything about him. I'm going to try to give you a rundown from my mind and, and, and just a, a scenario. So pardon me if I get tongue-tied and if I miss, miss some details. But, but you all are probably very familiar that Jacob was born uh, as a set of twins. And uh, Jacob had a, a twin brother named Esau, and uh, Jacob's parents named him rightly so uh, by naming him Jacob or Deceiver. And, and so uh, he was always trying to get his brother out of his birthright. Do you remember with a pot of porridge, he tried to get the birthright, and, and so he was always doing this deceiving because Esau was hungry and wanted some food, and so his brother deceived him with some food to get his birthright, and so the birthright had a lot to do because particularly the oldest is going to have a lot fall upon him. He's going to get more of the inheritance. He, when his father dies, is going to take on the leadership of the family. Uh, when you look at him, the blessings that are bestowed upon him are, are monetary, they're social, they're economical, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're leadership, and they're even spiritual blessings for, for the oldest. It all comes with that birthright. And so Jacob and Esau being twins, Esau uh, 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 being the firstborn, uh, the Bible says that, that, that he was a profane man and he Hebrews chapter number 12, and, and he despised his birthright. He sells it for a pottage of, uh, of lentils, if you would. And so the transaction begins to go on. And so here these twins come to be in their 40s. Bell and Brindley don't get there any too quick. <laughs> Bella, can I tell our little story that we have tonight at the table? Can I tell about that? So we were having a conversation with you. And she said, I don't want mommy and daddy to go on any more dates ever. And I said, well, Bill, well, that's kind of unfair. Do you never want to go on a date? She said, when I get bit, I'm going to come to the And I said, no, that's okay. She can when she gets bit. She wanted to. I wanted to. But not until she gets bit. Okay? Real big. Real big. Brother. And so I told her, Daddy is her boyfriend today. Hmm. And then she turned to Mommy and she said, Mommy, I want to grow up so I can go So, Bella, I just want to tell you and Brendan, don't grow up too quick, okay? Because Daddy's your boyfriend, right, Bella Gracie? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. So, it happens pretty quick. Sorry for letting me run. Thank you for letting me run down my rabbit trail. 
So these boys grow up and they're 40. And daddy is getting old. And so um, daddy's about to pass on the birthright. Um, and as he's about to do that, we know that he's about to call his, his, his oldest son in. But he says to his oldest son, he said, why don't you go kill a deer? Why don't you go get some venison, bring back, make some stew, and I will put the blessing upon you. Unfortunately, while he's out hunting, Jacob and his mother come and come out of the plan so that Jacob can get the blessing. And so they kill a, a goat, and even to this day we know that goat can take on the flavor of a lot of things. And so mommy spiced it up to make it taste like venison. And then they took the goat's hair and put it on his arms, and they put it upon his neck because his brother was a hairy man. And then he, 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 Jacob uh, did, didn't smell like his brother Esau, so he went and got those woodsy clothes, and he put them on so the smell would look good. And he come in where daddy was, and daddy's eyes weren't the best, and, and, and it didn't sound like his brother. It wasn't that deep gruff voice, but 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 it felt like it. It smelled like it. And, and it seems crazy that he got a deer so quickly and got it made. But, but, but nonetheless, it must be. And he pours out the blessing upon him. How sad. How sad. We know the story that happens. And so, all of a sudden, his brother comes home. And, and, and now Jacob is gone by the creek. And he comes in and he brings this meal to his father. And his father says to him, wait a second, you were just here. And things don't line up. And all of a sudden, on the outside, here is Rebecca and, 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 and Jacob talking. And she said, I want you to take a very far trip. And I want you to go down to my brother Laban. And I want you to hide up there because Esau will kill you. He'll get after you. He'll kill you. And so that's exactly what happened. And, and we know the story that, that, that Esau was there. And, and he's very mad. And he probably even wants to say to his dad, I'm going to kill my brother. But he thinks I'm not going to say it. My daddy will die. And then I'll grab all of that dirty rat scoundrel. And so in the meantime, Jacob makes his way down to where Uncle Laban lives. Far, far away. And as he's making the journey, he comes upon some men that 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 uh, are there and, and taking care of things at the well, and taking care of, uh, of their camels. And so they say, "Hey," he says to him, "Hey, do you know Laban? We know Laban. We know him. In fact, look right there. There's Rebecca coming, and he sees her. She." Just looks right in every <laughs> I mean, here is this guy who it takes several guys to pull the, 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 the stone off of the well, but he's like, I'm pulling this thing off by myself because I want the attention of this lady. And so he goes and he, he introduces himself to her. He, he tells the news of, uh, uh, of, of who he is. And so Rebecca says, well, I'll come home with you. Well, come home with me. I'll, I'll tell Daddy. And so she goes running in the house. And all of a sudden, as he goes running in the house uh, with her, he notices her older sister who's frumpy. And her eyes are crossed. Just more outside. All right. I'm not being mean. I'm just... You know, she's certainly not what her sister is. I'm going to leave it right there. You know the picture. You know what the Word of God says. And so, here it is that all the time, he's falling in love with Rebecca. Everything about Rebecca. He's falling, or, or Rachel, I'm sorry. Yeah. Rachel, I'm giving her a new name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you I'm going by the top of my head. I'm giving new names. He falls in love with, with, with Rachel. Uh, I mean, she's, she's beautiful. But he's like annoyed at her sister Leah. You know, like every time he wants to talk to Rachel, there is Leah being a pest. And, and you know, you're, you're trying to woo, and she's just kind of getting in the way. You know, you're trying to have these conversations, and you're just googly eyed for her, and, 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 and she keeps jumping in. And, and so here's Leah. She's probably doing twice the amount of work because Rachel is caught up in, 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 in Jacob. And, and so he enjoys the hospitality for a month or so in, in his Uncle Laban's house. And then he says to Laban, he says, Laban, I want to ask you something. 
and I'm very beautiful to all my children. Laban begins to notice he has no dowry, he has no home, he has no nothing. What does he have to give my daughter? And so they come to an agreement. You work seven years for her. You work seven years for her. That will be the price. If you work seven years for her, I will have you as my son-in-law. If you work seven years, I will take good care of you. So let's fast forward seven years. The Bible says it was like weeks. It goes by fast. He loves her. He's enjoying the companionship. He's enjoying the company. He's looking forward to the reward. It's nothing because he wants this. And so here it is. It's hard work. And so in, 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 in our Western world, it seems strange. But you know what, ladies? You're not invited to the wedding. Only the men are. Isn't that what the Bible says? The men gathered in. They come to the wedding. It's in the evening. It's dark. She's heavily veiled. And so he takes her to his place of abode. They consummate marriage. And in the morning light, as it begins to shine on her face. Do you men ever remember that when you first get married and the breaking of the morning and your bride is laying there? I mean, it's just phenomenal. You're thinking, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. This is awesome. And all the men said, Amen. Amen. I said, all the men said, I really <laughs> All the women said, Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> And so here it was that he wakes up, and can you imagine what it's like waking up, and you feel like there's a bumblebee in your bed? I mean, you're like getting out of there. What? What is going on? This is not what I bargained for. This is not who I chose to get married. This is not who I worked seven years for. No way, no how. How can he do this to me? And so he gets himself dressed up, and he runs over, and he knocks on Laban's door. Laban! Laban was ready. Laban knew it was going to come. I mean, you got to be kidding me. He knew. And so he, 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 he begins to say, what did you do? You deceived me. You tricked me. Why did you give me Leah, the older one? I don't care for her. She annoys me. I don't like her. And he says simply the same thing that I'm already restating. He said, sorry, in our culture, you cannot marry the younger one until the older one is married. Why did you do this to me? I have worked seven years for Rachel. I have worked seven years. I invested in this. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I worked for. This is not where I want to be. And Leah, I, I can't believe you tricked me. I was set up. I believe it. I can't believe it. He said, I'll tell you what I'm doing. You stay. You work seven more years. And uh, I'll give you Rachel. Seven years of labor. You got Leah. That's the price. But let's strike another deal. Seven more. And you can have. Rachel. So, I'll work. I'll wait to give what I want. Could you imagine? Let's imagine here what it must be like to be married to two sisters who are two different people. God didn't design that number one. So it's it's, it's an unwanted thing. But can I ask you this? We think about Rachel and how she must have felt. Maybe there's disappointment for her in seven years not to be given because that was her expectation too. But yet she hears that he's willing to work another seven years. How loved she must have felt. But can I ask you in the middle of the story, how do you think you would feel? Unloved, unwanted, unappreciated. She's been working circles around her sister 
who was probably googly-eyed all over Jacob, and she was doing twice the amount of work. She's married to a man who doesn't love her. She probably feels used, and she's working very hard for him to love her, but yet in return, he doesn't. And so here it is that she bears him three sons. And then there is a fourth son. Finally, uh, she couldn't bear the thought of, of not receiving any of, uh, 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 of, of his attention. So a bargain happens again. Please, Rachel, to send him with me one night. She gets pregnant. And then she gets pregnant again. Five, six. And it's not easy. Things didn't go the way Leah wants them to. But when we look at the story, things certainly didn't go the way Jacob wanted them to go. You know, I don't know why I felt so hard pressed to teach on this tonight. But how many of us in the middle of life we say, wait a second, I didn't bargain for this. I didn't work for this. This isn't what I wanted for my life. And here I am stuck with it. Here I am. I'm stuck with it. I didn't want this. You see, Rachel represents everything beautiful that all of us want in life. We want it. It looks good. It feels good. It has to be right. It's what we want and we work hard for it. Every one of you in here have worked hard for something. You want to, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your, your, uh, uh, your economic place, whether it's uh, your, your type of employment, whether it's your health, whether it's your whatever it is, there are things that you have worked for in your, in your life. And this is what you expected. You expected to have Rachel. And you know what? When you wake up in the morning, you found and you feel like you've been deceived because now you have Leah. The frumpy, the, the weak eyed, the one who is less than. It's not what you bargained for. It's not what you wanted. And hey, let's be real tonight. Every one of us here on some level have been there or are there. I don't care how spiritual you are tonight. Amen. We've all been there. Amen. And we probably all will be there. We feel like uh, uh, it's easy to love. It's easy to love Rachel. But Brother Eli, it's not so easy to love Leah. It's hard work. And, 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 and it's not Leah's fault. Leah's done everything that she knows to do right. And she's provided. And she wants it. But yet it's not what we want. I'm not talking about marriages tonight. I'm talking about life and life in general. It's not what we want. So Rachel representing everything that we want, the beauty, our dreams, rewards, our efforts, our accomplishments. Leah represents all of our disappointments, all of our pain, all of our brokenheartedness. She's always hounding for attention. She's living... Uh, Living with her is frustrating, can be depressing. Uh, it, it can sometimes even be disgusting. It wears us out. Listen, guys, you know what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. There can be things in life that can do that to us. So what's the lesson to learn? How many other times did you ever think you were going to get Rachel and you wound up in your life getting the weak out of Leah? Staring back at you. Every dream, every plan, every promise, shipwrecked. Living with Leah can represent a lot of pain in our life. It can represent addictions, the effects of bad choices, the effects of maybe divorce in our life, the effects of economic reverses. It can be the effects of bad choices and bad habits, bad decisions. Our health. All those things. How can this possibly happen? You know what? The enemy wants to trick us to make us think that God doesn't care for us. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me tonight? The enemy would want you to think that God doesn't care for you. That you are working for one thing and you wound up with something else. 
and it seems like an injustice. It seems unfair. It's disappointing. You fall in love at first sight. You're intoxicated with the promise of something. And you wake up in the morning and there's no I was intoxicated with something else. I was believing for something different. What can you do? What can you do? I'm going to give you the answer. You can do nothing. You can do nothing. Leah gives Jacob six sons. Rachel gives him two. Joseph and his old age Benjamin. But I want you to think about something tonight. Leah represents something that she gave Jacob that Rachel never could. I feel the Holy Ghost. Leah gave him a son by the name of Judah. Do you know what Judah represents? It represents worship and praise. It's not what he wanted, but what he got, even though it wasn't what he wanted, birthed to him worship and praise that he would have never had otherwise. It gave him things beyond what he could ever imagine. What he wanted only gave him two sons, but we find that what he didn't want gave him a six sons. And so how many of us, I look back over my life and I see the leaders of my life. I mean, times that, 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 that there's disappointment, times that there's hurt, times that there's pain. God help us tonight. Let's be real tonight. Amen. On this last Bible study till the end of, of December. Let's be very real tonight. Every one of us has dealt with her. Every one of us has dealt with pain. Every one of us has dealt with setbacks. Every one of us has set, uh, dealt with schedules that, 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 that have been changed. A shattered expectation. Canceled plans. Uh, empty promises. False hopes. Trickery. Betrayals. Lies. Weariness. Even sometimes disgust. And I hate to say this, but Leah has exposed my weakness. Weakness. And Leah exposes your weakness. It brought me closer to the Lord. Because of Leah, we are where we are today. Amen. And this I know. What does Romans 8, verse number 28 says? That all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Let's just stop right there. How can this heartache, how can this cancel, how can this setback, how can this thing be that I did not want? How can it work together for me? And how can it bring glory to God and work in my life? I want you to know, amen, that you may dream about raising at night and you wake up in the morning and you have Leah but the truth is Jesus amen has more encounters with people that have Leah amen than what he ever has encounters with people that have Rachel's think about it there was a woman with an issue of blood the Bible says that for many years there she was, uh, 12 young, long years. She suffered with the sickness. She spent her money. She went to doctors, none the better, and she had nothing. Brother Craig, it was her Leah. But one day, because of Leah, this woman rose up in hope when she heard that Jesus was passing by. And Sister Laura, she reached out in faith and touched him. If it were not for the Leah of her life, she would have never touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Thank God for Leah tonight. How about the paralytic who's by the pool and suffering? Amen. Can't, 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 can't get there. 38 years. Amen. Being paralyzed was his Leah. But one day because of his paralysis, amen, Leah brought him an encounter with God Almighty. Amen. Leah brings those encounters. Those things are unexpected. Those changes in plans. Things that we never hoped for, but what we've been given. The discipline. How about the widow who was attending the funeral of her only son? 
talk about women. Rachel, where are you? Rachel, where are you? My husband is dead. No one wants to lose her spouse. And then she loses her child. Wait, this isn't how life is to be. My child is going to bury me, not me bury my child. Where's Rachel? Where's my dream? She woke up in the morning. It was the It's what she didn't want. It's what she didn't expect. But because of where she ran into a man who changed her life and gave her life. What about the disciples who are swamped in the boat? Was it what they wanted? We're serving God. It shouldn't be this way. But the storm arose literally, but God showed up. What about the woman at the well? Married, divorced, different men. Her life is a mess. Don't tell me that she set out to have a life that was broken like that. No one dreams of that when they're a little kid. No one dreams of being hurt and used and abused. And, 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 and embarrass them like no one dreams of that. She dreamed of rich and woke up with Leah. But because of Leah, she met a man for the He changed her life. Who empowered her to go and sin no more. What about the thief on the cross? Oh God, you'll never tell me that some little boy was growing up thinking one day I'll be a thief on the cross and I'll die on that cross. That wasn't his dream. That was bad choices. That was bad decisions. He wanted Rachel. But he woke up in the morning clean. But because of Leah, he met Jesus on the cross. I'm telling you tonight, I know in our lives we can have Leah's. It's not what we want. You know, we, 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 we begin to understand that, that Leah changed, changes Jacob's uh, perception. Here it was that they're away from home and Rachel dies and he wants to bury her, but he, 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 doesn't, uh, he doesn't bury her where he wants, smitten with grief. He has to bury her close to where she died. But we find that in time, that Leah mellows his heart. And in the end, he will slowly put beside him. See, Jacob on his deathbed, he tells his sons, he realized that without Leah, his dreams of foundation would never, ever be. What he did not want became what gave him his greatest dream. I want to ask you tonight, is Phil God here? I'm sorry, for me tonight's different than typical Tuesday nights. I said to you on Sunday morning, everybody can live, everybody can visit the funk. Everybody can go there, but we cannot reside there. What does that mean? Everybody goes to that place where there's a dark cloud over your head, or you may feel depressed, but God does not intend for us to live there and stay there. So you may be here tonight, and you may say, Oh, Seville, this isn't for my life. This isn't what I expect. This isn't what I wanted. Pastor, this isn't what I dreamed of. I feel like it's true. And this is what I want. Can I tell you that instead of tonight being repulsed by Leah, why don't you embrace her? Why don't you embrace her? Instead of taking a lifetime to figure out that this isn't what I dreamed of or what I want, do you not think that God?
God is in charge of the details of your life. And that God allows things to happen. Sometimes they're because of our choices. But it's those leaders that can bring us back around to God. Let me tell you a little story. Some years ago, I was inundated by people who kept speaking to me. Oh, your church is in the north, blah, 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 blah. This isn't what I'm used to. It's not what I like, yada, yada, yada. It made me feel bad. And then I got to the place where I said, wait a second. This is what God's called me to do. Amen. And this is where I'm going to embrace. And I long ago, a long years ago, left that mentality. When we, and it's not that I don't want to be or didn't want to be here. Sometimes you can have an expectation of things that you envision that needs to be this way. You just have to say, God, I'm a person. Because in the end, <coughs> this is what's best for me. For me, Brother Doug, I never sat around as a young person and thought, wow, I want a full time job in pastor church. <laughs> but long ago, I already embraced that. Mm. And it is okay. Those are just some of the Leah's that I can tell you about. There's other Leah's. You have your leads as well. In fact, some of us might have it tonight. That we're strong. Even if it's not what you wanted or what you wanted, I really want to encourage you tonight. And listen. She's liable to give you far more than what that dream of Rachel had become. Because God's here. God's Allow your life to be written by God. Allow the things that you feel are less than what you dreamed. Let it be God's will.